All right, welcome back. I'm just up at Jackson's Fullwood Quarry here, and the plate has just been delivered, the Hardox 450, for the shoots that we looked at back in one of the previous chapters. I think it was two chapters back. We will be doing this over a weekend. It is bank holiday weekend this weekend, so it won't be this weekend. I've got plans myself. We've got an A30 running through here that's getting greedy boards put on it. And we've got a J50 down the quarry that's got, we've taken the job out to replace the locking wedges. Now then we've got the lads on site here. I'm just gonna go and find out where the lock bar is and wedges so these boys can get the jaw back in because they need to get crushing as soon as possible. Um, we'll come back to this when the greedy boards are finished, probably tomorrow. Okay, so this is our J50. I should have said Jackson's J50, which is part of our group anyway. That's the jaw that we've taken out. Now then we took that jaw out because the jaw lock wedges had worn and the jaw was shaking loose, so they caught it in time. They saw the nuts that were loose on the side of the box and we lifted the jaw out before it fell out. We're actually just waiting for the uh, lock wedges to turn up on site to put the jaw back in. Now then, the jaw box should be cleaned out ready. This is the cam director. Yeah, so that's all ready for the jaw to go back in, as you can see. The track looks good. It's your locking track. So then wedges are due for delivery any minute. When they do turn up, the boys will put that jaw back in. Get this back crushing today. All right, so the lads will jump back on this when the parts turn up. They'll, they'll pull off that 30 and jump onto this, so there's nothing more for me to do here. The rain is coming. Let's get back to the air director. So this is the Hard Ox 450 floor for that Cat 950 loading shovel. Nice bend on it there. Did the template not come back with it, Cal? Did the template come back with this? No. Right. Either me and you will go and fit this, or I might send you on your own. A little side job for you, innit? Huh? You go with director. Yeah? We'll see what... Uh, what the week brings us, we have got a lot on. That little strip there, that is to go in front of the uh, the bolts that hold the edge on, yeah? So there's not much left on the edge and that'll just go on the edge just to build it up a little bit. And then when on this front edge here, once it's welded on, we'll put a couple of runs of hard facing against that front edge. Now then when you do put that in, you'll have to jack it out. If I don't come with you, you'll have to jack it out in the middle about 30 mil, yeah? To stop the bucket from bowing, because as soon as you weld that floor in now, that bucket's gonna bow like that. So to stop that from happening, you jack it the other way, 30 mil. Right, so we've just got some link arms coming again here now. Now, I think these are off a 170 rubber duck. As you can see, That arm there, twisted at that end. And these two little link arms are bent. Again. Now then, Stefan's just stripped this down. So where was where was the machine at here now? Yeah. Where we... It's at the yard at the minute, but it was down in Manchester. Manchester Yard. Who was the hirer? You're not sure? Not sure. So it wasn't our operator driving machine? No. Right, so it's not our operator that's been running the machine, so we all know how much these link arms are, don't we, from last one? But I'd say that these ones here, we might be able to get that twist out at that end. Right, so these ones here, they're dead easy to straighten and press, them two. 
but we'll try giving them a go other than that it'll be a case of uh, making our own like we went through the process last time didn't we getting that little uh, push link and we converted it from uh, little dog bones to a push link so mm, tricky one tricky one what to build now then I could I could be a bit ruthless here and just build the customer for the full amount which is what we should do really because it's a fairly new machine that isn't it at 170 yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm not that type of person so we'll try straightening them for starters and then I'll show you them either back on the machine or we'll go for another push link again cheers Steph lab another shutter frame ready two more to go very time consuming as I say they have to keep pulling them off to do jobs on trucks we've had a rake of trucks in today off camera Alright, so we've got this uh, Hardox 450 skin in the back of Paul's van here. He runs a five ton van, so he's still not overweight with putting material in the back. So he will go and fit this tomorrow on the Cat 950 loader. We'll be alright with that, son? Yeah, yeah. I was going to go do this myself, yeah, but um, I've decided I'm going to go down to CMS Setcore, I think is how you pronounce it, down Leicestershire way. Uh, they supply all wear parts. I need a jaw for a J40, so we're going to actually go down and collect it ourselves and um, see what they're all about because they have got a massive facility and apparently they can supply us with all our work parts. So we'll find out tomorrow. So we've got the trailer on, 6 a.m. in the morning, light morning, only for another week though as the clocks will move this weekend. So. We're going to go and head down to Leicestershire way now to CMS and go and see what they're all about. Okay, so we just landed at CMS Set Core down in Colville, Leicestershire. This is Nigel. Hello, all right. And uh, basically, I'm after a jaw for a J40, and I thought I'll take this opportunity, and there it is actually, I'll take this opportunity to have a ride down and see what this factory is actually all about. Nigel, over to you, tell us what you're all about. So, largest aftermarket spare supplier in the UK. So, we're currently holding about £26 million worth of stock down at Global Part Centre where we're shipping out to the whole of the world. We've got another 13 million pounds of all the internals from jaw shafts to cone um, bushes, head spider bushes. Yeah, pretty much anything you can desire. Now then I just drove in this yard and I said to the director, wow, right? I didn't realize how big these, these men were, yeah? And I'm, we're only seeing a little bit of it here now. We'll show you guys a lot more of it within this little video here now. So how long have you been trying to get me down here, Nigel? Well, I reckon it's been an hard three years of trying to get hold of you. You are a three, difficult three, man to get hold of. Three years. That's because I'm loyal to the uh, suppliers that I've got now, yeah, but there's enough work to go about in there. We've got enough crushers, yeah. yeah. So I thought we'd try a few work parts out. Now tell us about the manganese that's in that. So this will be your standard 18% manganese, um, probably one of the most used manganese that's out there. You've got 14, 18, 21% generally. Yeah. Everybody's using 18%, but it is application dependent, and you, we'd have to take a little bit more advice on what we're doing. Yeah. Um, and, and what you. So that's 18% manganese. Yeah. So that's pretty much that'll be pretty much like what we buy off the shelf. Yeah. From our own suppliers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, for general wear or general aggregates, general demolition sites, 18%. Yeah. 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 We would use 14 for more along your lines of your your limestones. Yeah. Uh, 21s for anything that's yeah, a little bit yeah. more abrasive. So I don't really need any more than 18%? No. No. Right. 
I mean, we will put this to the test. We'll put it on a quarry and see how many hours we get out of it before we need to turn it. I mean, cost per tonne is the biggest one for us. I mean, at the end of the day, if we're saving you money, yeah, we're yeah. a little bit cheaper. Yeah, you get the same wear life. Happy yeah. days. Great. Let's go and take a look around. Let's go down to Manganese Yard first and have a look. Yeah. See what we got here. So what we got on the ground here? So we stock everything from like all your major brands, Mezzos, Pegson, Sandvix, uh, got Rake Pegson liners here, Sandvik liners, jaw plates, um, all your major ones, McCluskey's, Sandvix, Mezzos again, primary gyratory to suit the likes of Glenn Sander, uh, Tor Works. Uh, Glenn Sander, so you supply Glenn Sander? Yeah, we supply liners up to Glenn Sander. I mean... So how many jaw plates have you got here now, tonnage wise? Tonnage wise, uh, manganese, we're looking at about 10,000 tonnes of manganese here on the ground in stock and we're getting so, containers in daily. 10,000 tonnes. 10,000 tonnes. Equates to about 13 million pounds worth whoa, of stock. Whoa. Director, just, it'll take us half an hour to walk down there. Look at size of the yard. You get the gist of it, yeah? Let's look inside the building. Okay, so this is one of the factories. Is this your large component store? This is a large component store based in behind the head offices. Yeah. So it's where we'll store all the mainframes, upper frames, um, cool. adjustment rings for your Metzos, again, your Sandvix, all major brands. So what's that little oven thing you've got over there? So this is one of the new ovens that we bought probably the end of last year. Um, this is where we'll heat up like your heads uh, yeah. for, for your shafts. It'll be cooked for 10 hours up to a temperature of about 240 degrees when the um, assembly guys will come in then, take some measurements with um, internal external mics. I can actually feel the, the heat in. from here, so that's just, how long's that been out? It's been out probably half an hour now, half an hour. An hour. Right. So then that'll cool down and that's probably destined for the States. Point of States? Yeah, for one of our, for CMS America. Right, right. So, so what are these for here? Top shells and bottom shells for Sandvik cone crushers. They're all Sandvik, are they? Yeah. yeah. Now then, that, that's familiar to me. Pegson 1000. Pegson 1000, so that's what we've got up at our quarry in Jackson's Preston. Yeah. If you remember us changing the corn last time, we lifted the upper frame off, didn't we, and uh, did the full assembly. Fantastic machine, robust as hell, running on bearings. Um, so what kind of money is sat there right now? About 90 grand, about just, for the, just for a base cone. About 90,000 just there, right Yeah, there now. around about there. What's that off? That's the Terex 1300. That's the 1300, it's a little it's bit the bigger. the next one up. Yeah, yeah. Right. Hell of a robust machine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, across the south coast of England, and all the sand and gravels. So how much difference are these to buying them actually off Terex? Difficult to say. Never Is really. it? Identical, it's our own. So I couldn't put that head onto ours, yeah. you're like, you could? Yeah, All right. 100% interchangeable. Right, right. 100%, we, we, we kind of, we'll have had one of these back in, we would have scanned yeah. it with the technology that we'll show you in a minute. Yeah. Um, so everything is like for like. Right. All interchangeable parts. So I can buy all the bits for ours. Yep. Right. Off the shelf, here. Right, so all right. Down. Everything that we supply is to an OEM specification. Right. So if you want a bearing to fit one of these, we've got a bearing to fit one of these. If you right. want the top upper frame to fit a Pegson 1000, we'll have the upper frame to fit the Pegson 1000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, Nigel, so what's this that we're looking at here now? So this is a CH430 top shell, but probably the best thing I can do is pass you over to Jack, who um, works on our technical side. He'll be able to explain what's happening. You're on the spot now, Jack, boy. Yeah, I know, yeah. Well, um, tell us, Jack, what, what this is all about. We're basically just 3D scanning the entire cab model to ensure that it is correct once it's been assembled. So once all the parts have been fitted to this, we will scan the whole thing and then we will align it to the cab model and we'll put like a heat map on top of it so we can see in terms of blue, green and red what fits, what's out, what's going to collide, anything like that to ensure that it will fit nicely when it gets to site and that it's going to run as intended, really. So this is like a final inspection, is it? Yeah, yeah, so this is like the last step of the process before it's just going to sit in stock and uh, wait for someone to buy it, basically. This is a lot more technical than I thought so. 
everything has to be. It's come on leaps and bounds from your old micrometers yeah, and yeah. Uh, internal externals. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're still heavily used, and we'll show you that when we go down to the um, technical yeah. centre later on. We still massively use the old school equipment as well. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. modern technology, some of the scanners we use are accurate to three mil over 70 metres. Three mil over 70 metres, yeah. wow. That just shows how far uh, we've come along, don't we? Yeah, massive. Yeah, yeah. Right, let's go and have a look at the... Uh, Technical centre next. Yep, so... Yeah. Oh, so they're just loading the job here now, so let's get this on cam. So how many of these uh, higher baggins have you got, Nigel? Five IR baggins on the road now. Um, how many Various bands? capabilities. I think it's 10 to 12 service vehicles, all fully packed, racked, all yeah. welders, yeah. gas all their own tools that are inside along with any of the heavy equipment that we need yeah. which for you like your plow rads your high torque machines for undoing your, your your locking bolts and nuts yeah 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 so how many employees here we've got 110 here in the uk i think now we're up to 25 or 30 in the united states as well united states yeah so oh. the owner of the business chris so he's a family-owned business um been here since 1960 i believe 1960. So david sydenham started the set core up or cms up back in the day crushing manganese steel yeah. um we then bought out set core later on what then, from, bud? so yeah they, um, they've been doing this for since 1960 basically right so Family run, 64 years here. yeah wow they've um still in the business chris now runs the uh, american operation yeah and matthew runs this part of the business in the UK still. Yeah. Uh, the owner, the original, David, still keeps his hand, hand in, rings never, up. Never, never um, take his hand now. No, he, he rings up like now. most weeks, yeah. checks the figures, makes sure everything's yeah. turned in the right direction. That's what you got to do. But yeah, uh, uh, amazing place so to work So who's this boy we've got on crane here? Adam I've heard, Macca. He's, I've heard he's a bit of a legend. An absolute legend in this industry. I mean, if you don't know about Macca, he, well, you don't know anything. So you know, you know everything you need to know about crushes, do you, lad? Oh, I almost sound the best in the world, but I'm not in the top one. Yeah. <laughs> do, you want, do you want a job? <laughs> <laughs> right, let's go and have a look at that Yeah, let's go down and have a look at the other one, all right? Yeah, I'll sound that. Nice one, Macca. Thank you ever so much. Slightly forward if I slam on, you know what I mean? So we just drove half a mile down the road. What's that, Nigel? There's a 5474 primary gyratory from um, Tor Works down in the south of England. So it's a site quite close to me. Yeah. It's an um, absolutely mega machine. It's one of the only walking crushes I've ever seen. That's a monster. <laughs> and it's still a baby in the gyratory world, to be fair. So this? Global Part Centre. So this is where we've got 13 million pounds worth of stock internals for crushes, cones, jaws. Um, we're shipping parts out of here daily, all over the world. All over the world. And what's this little factory here? This is our technical centre, so our machine shop. Um, oh, can we take a look inside there? You can indeed, let's go and have a look. Let's go and have a look. Right, so we're in the technical centre here now. And look at this. My little Indian the father would love this, wouldn't he? Oh, I've been at AGS Engineering. So here we got Rob, the uh, workshop manager, is it? Chief manager. Chief manager. Right, and Rob, you just give us a little walk around of this factory and tell us what you're doing here. Yeah, this machine just is uh, do some Puma 700. LM2, uh, do a lot of the turning on it. It would take a bar up to about 700 mil in there, three meters long, um, and up to about six. six 700 six. by three meter shaft. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. This oh. is one of the smaller ones. As That's well. just one of the smaller ones. Let's have a walk around. So what's that the boys are working on there? Yeah, this one that they're working on now is the Doosan Puma. 400, 4,100 XL. Uh, that's, it's very similar, but obviously it's three meter long, but the diameter's a, a lot less. Right, so probably take up, yeah. yeah, yeah. That one hasn't got a driven tool in, that's actually got a driven tool in the 700. Right. So, right. so you can do, that's got milling capability as well. So you got a 12 and a half ton crane? Yeah, we've got, got two, of, two of them, two of them on this side. What's this little thing here? This is our brand new CMM. Uh, just recently put in about a month ago and that job on there what's the that minute, a laser or something no that's part of a loco that is that job it's the comrade down the side of a loco that's probe right. that red bit on the end 
right. touch on different touch parts of the right. job right. and it gets up a picture yeah, of what yeah. the job looks yeah, like. Yeah. Super accurate, microns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a bit more so, technical yeah. than I thought this job, isn't it? Yeah. Huh? And these these are a portable version. Of, um, you could oh, say. Oh, right. these, these little ones here, yeah. Yeah. They've also got the the probe. Yeah, yeah. You can take them round the shop. Yeah. Um, we've got we've got the tripods tripods there behind you. Position them in front of the machine. Them little tripods there. Position them in front of the machine and then take the uh, measurements. This is part of the heritage. Uh, this part is that we that we do of it. This is the loco wheels. Oh, loco wheels, right? Yeah. Okay, he's, he's director. These were things we put on with wooden pegs. Were they? Yeah, that, that there. So how old, how many years do you think that is? It's off, uh, what was it, 1920, 18 something, was it? Oh, I can't remember off the top of my head. I'll have to find out some facts on that one and let you know. Yeah. yeah. But behind you, you've got a 200 ton press as well. And that obviously helps press the wheels on the shafts. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's one serious press. Yeah, that's what we you press these. Yeah, press, yeah, yeah. Press the wheels onto the shafts there. Yeah. So you'd have an interference fit on them. The bit that you've seen a minute ago on the CMM, the Comrod, yeah. that, that's what we've machined. We've done the new version. For, ah, for I'm it. with you. I'm with you now. Right. So it ain't just crusher spares that we get. Oh, no, that's what I was see. thinking, we've yeah. Got more feathers in our Yeah, cap. yeah. It's a lot more then. Yeah. Do whatever you want. We're doing a, a load of bolts um, for a, an impact crusher. Yeah. I know it's still a crusher, but we'll, we'll produce the bolts. That's our little Chloe that shows around, by the way, but doesn't really want to be on cam. Yeah, there, the 700 LM2. These are the type of shafts that would be right, done would you... on a regular basis yeah. in there. Yeah. They're actually eccentric. Right. So you've got the middle part yeah. running through, yeah. and then the arms. Yeah, yeah. Is it a single or double eccentric? That's a single. Single eccentric. On that one, yeah. So you made them, have you? Uh, yeah. yeah. Right, so tell us about these two machines here. Honor VL125CMs, two identical vertical lathes. Yeah. Um, One behind you there, director. Yeah. Both exactly the same, yeah? Both exactly the same. Both uh, predominantly turning machines, but also have uh, driven tooling, which is milling capability. I was swing a job on there, diameter wise, 1.3 mil, depending on how you hold it. Yeah. Uh, ram up and down, up and down stroke, uh, 1100 mil. So are these sunk in the, into the ground specifically? Yes, they are, so yeah. that they can get the crane over right. the top of the co of the column because yeah, that's yeah, where yeah. the ram. I think this was dug in what five years ago now. Yeah, four, four, five, five years. Yeah, four, five years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So this used to be a small component stores here. Yeah. Because of the continuous growth of CMS, it was decided that we needed more and more machining capabilities. The tool, the, all the stores was moved over to um, over to global parts. Yeah. And then these units were dug in. Yeah. So yeah, they've been here for five years now. Well, that's unusual. Let's have a little wonder. Director, there's too much to show in here. Go on, show, show them a quick walk around. The global part stores and as you can see it's absolutely massive i had no idea how big this place was so nigel where can our viewers find you so go online www.cmsepco.co.uk um get hold of us through there if you need any telephone numbers or anything like that i'm sure baz can help you out in I mean, the future I, did, I didn't know this was here yeah so i'm pretty sure you guys didn't know this was here if i didn't 
So I will be using you boys again, no doubt about it. And we probably will come down here again. Yeah. Yeah. I think we, we, we've, we've, got, we've got quite a bit of footage here that really we need more time to get more footage. If, we've you, do, if, you, want to see, if you want to see more of CMS, yeah, let us know in the comments and we'll be back down. We better get back to the workshop director. All right, so we're loaded up, strapped on. Very nice little uh, meeting that. Cheers for that, Nigel. Thank you very much. Chloe. Down. Lovely to meet you. Feel like being on camera, but now she's on camera. <laughs> I'm shy. Right, we will see you both again soon. Yeah. All right, mate. To Cheers. It. Take it easy. Right, we'll see you soon. Cheers. This is the last of the concrete shutters. These will go out next week. I'm glad they're out of the way to be honest because now I've got my workshop back. Uh, we'll pull the mixer in in a minute, we've got uh, that repair to do on that drum. That's the jaw we've got for the J40 from CMS. When the crusher comes back in off higher, we will fit that to the machine. And we'll have a good tidy up in the workshop first. the patch done on the uh, barrel which is ready to go back to Jackson's now so there's only so many times you can repair one of them barrels as it's getting thin it's getting really thin that so getting ready for a new barrel really so we've got a little 20 ton uh, digging bucket here that's looked like it's been used as a ripper Completely broke that corner adapter off. That was out on hire, so customer will be billed for that. And look what we got here. We got part of the bucket off the 953 drop that we went out to uh, probably six, seven weeks ago, I can't remember now. But one of the hanger brackets has started to crack again. And it's this one on the opposite side. If you remember, we went out to site to repair this, didn't we? So I'm thinking now we might just try doing a different weld procedure on it or beef it up with uh, like a bit of a plate on it like that, you know what I mean? Um, I'm not too sure yet but we'll uh, we'll get that in the workshop and uh, either beef it up with a plate and try a different weld procedure using some uh, dissimilar rods. So this is mid chapter. It is just after the Easter break, it is Tuesday morning. Um, so I have read all the comments from the last chapter and uh, noticed that there was a lot of love for Luke, uh, which there should be, pleased about that. Uh, I wish him all the well going back to Wallbanks. 
and um, he's welcome back at any time you know um, I kind of like to leave the door open for lads if they're good lads you know because uh, good lads are hard to come by these days as most people will probably know out there you know uh, in my experience you usually have to go through 10 10 lads to get one good and do you know what I mean um, so yeah uh, appreciate your comments on that front uh, I noticed there was a few comments on um, that back door being damaged on the eight wheel tipper because of oversized material hitting it saying that it's the driver's responsibility now then I get what you're saying it is a grey area you know but the job the particular job that there was on um, there was a site visit of one of the managers and um, they were supposed to break that material down to a certain size so it'd go through uh, a normal tipper door no problem so obviously one of the loads hasn't been uh, the driver wasn't allowed to get out of the cab whilst it's been loaded so there's another reason um, and once the uh, once he's got off site and uh, away he's not going to go back on site and get him to unload it yeah um, probably didn't check do you know what I mean but he shouldn't need to check if the material should have been processed down to the correct size for a tipper now then we do have a lot of tippers here within the yard with barn doors on specifically for jobs like that carrying big boulders they are actually got uh, they have actually got a thicker hard ox floor in them so they'll take more hammer yeah um, the ones with the barn doors so if there is big material to move around like that then them should have been on that job do you know but uh, the customer said no it would be fine with normal tippers so obviously they will get the bill for that so i just want to address that one uh, this week we've got the expander pins going in on the deuce and dl420 now then whether we'll get that in this chapter or not i don't know because um it is a short week and i am on holiday next week so i'm going to try and film two chapters within this next four days now then obviously we're mid chapter here now so we've this one's not far off done so this might be a short chapter that's up to the director i'll let him sort that out all right uh, there's plenty going on in the yard today uh, a couple of machines going out um so yeah that's where we're up to paul's on holiday so there's only me uh jay and callum in uh also i did notice that people were saying callum smashed the frames out the shutter frames yeah it wasn't just callum it was callum and jay um there are other people working <laughs> than just callum you just see a lot of callum on camera that's all he uh, you know he's he's my right hand man and uh, uh he likes to be on camera more than anybody else should we say um so yeah let's crack on so i'm just rounding our plant yard we've got a zx250 just about to go out on higher that is that bucket that we repaired a couple of chapters back we put new wear strips on the bottom if you remember we'll take the teeth off that uh, bucket that's be been brought round to us now put a new set of teeth on the adapters Weld this 250 by 30 edge on. That way it can go to site. We'll also fill in between here back to the bucket as we'll show you. So that's the bucket in the workshop. The only thing that concerns me is one of the adapters has been replaced, this end adapter here. And it's on slightly different angle so it's all the adapters if you look at that too you see how that tooth is pointing upwards compared to the others so all we'll have to do there is uh, build some more weld up when we put the flat teeth on obviously these teeth will be reused on another bucket it's just a lot easier welding teeth on like this Jay's just grinding the paint off now and welding it to like a round edge if you will you see how much of that you'd have to fill in there 
and there. A lot easier to weld the flat piece. That's the plate we're going to use. Cal's just going to cut it down now. We only use pro fade in this workshop. I used to use acetylene years ago. The difference between pro fade and acetylene is acetylene is a lot hotter to use. But I don't like the black smoke that comes off it all the smog. So, and a lot of sites don't allow acetylene to be on site and we have, a, we have oxygen, um, propane within all the vans. So we don't bother with using acetylene. So always preheat the plate first.
but now the plate's welded on and the plate's in between the teeth and the adapters we'll just quickly gouge this cracked weld re-weld that and you can warm the wagon as it's waiting outside So that's that done now, ready to go. That's just took 45 minutes to do. Wagon's waiting outside, so I'll go and bang that on in a sec. Like I say, fold it around that top pin as well. And now we've got this Miller in. This 20 ton dig here now. Now then, this is the one that we picked up from Bear Cup the other week and I thought it was about six month old but I actually think it's a bit longer than six month old to be fair and I thought they were digging overburden didn't I well there's no way they've just been digging overburden with that we uh, the amount of wear that's on it and the, like the damage to the floor if you will you can see all the floor is like warped small crack there so we'll build all these up build these welds up here so as you can see there's not much weld on that at all is there there's probably one maybe two runs on that which is a little bit crazy really yeah there's two runs on it if you can see there two passes one all the way around the rest of it so what we'll do, we'll cut this out now just to give us a bit more breathing space here to pull this back up maybe even put a patch in there it's a crack there as well can you see so what we'll do, we'll weld a plate on here with an eye in it put a chain block down to here and then pull that back up and weld up, gouge all that out first and then weld it up now then this bucket here has just been welded with this little Kempi M323 just on normal standard cheap 1mm wire we seem to be alright Cal did it weld alright that little 323 yeah mint yeah Smooth. So it gets Carl's approval, little Kempi. Yeah. Right, do you want to go and bang that up again? Tom's wasting that yard for it. Yeah. And then they'll crack on with this one. And this is off the 953D, which we'll go into more detail after, as the hanger brackets have. Well, one of the hanger brackets, should I say, has cracked again on the opposite side. I think it's this one. So I'm thinking, gouge it out again, re-weld it using a different weld procedure, and maybe plate it. But I'll just have to check to see how close we are on the machine on the other side of the bucket. See if we see that little crack there. Oh, there's a bigger crack than that on the other side. 
also with this bucket we'll take this edge off here can you see how it's all worn there well that should be about the that edge so we'll replace that edge as well whilst we've got this uh, this little drop bucket in the workshop we'll crack on with this first of all the teeth that we took off the bucket will be reused obviously plenty of wear left on them yet it's just a lot easier using new teeth on an edge and that edge will be marked up to that bucket so if it does go back to teeth in the future it'll be put to one side and it'll have a number on it so we can uh, put it back onto that bucket if we need a no teeth bucket again further down the line and yeah lad now then Jay yeah, we've decided that I'm going to put Jay in Luke's van yeah are you happy with that it's what it is yeah so I'm going to get Jay out on site a little bit more because since Jay started here now probably two years ago is it around two years ago ish he's been in the workshop full time pretty much so by the way with foxy we're going to put jay in the van and we're going to see if we can manage without taking somebody else on for the time being yeah if somebody good good does good, does come along then i'll think about taking somebody else on but at this moment in time we're going to put jay out on the road get cal out on the road a little bit more because he's desperate to get out on the road isn't he so you might be a little bit surprised that we're not replacing Luke at the moment. Um, if things get to a point where we're really struggling, then we will replace him and I will go back out. I will put another shout out for uh, CVs again. Although I've got a lot of CVs on file. If I don't get back to your apologies, it's just that I've got that many of them, especially DMs on Instagram. Um, but I have got a future uh, welder in the making, sat right there. Oh, this is my little uh, Princess Bella. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So tell us, uh, how do you like welding? I love it. You love it? Mm -hmm. And what do you want to be when you get older? A teacher and a welder. You want to be a teacher and a welder? Yes. Right. So for those that don't know, I do teach my daughter how to weld on weekends, some weekends, yeah. And there is an episode out on YouTube of me teaching her. It's only an half an hour long episode. Um, so if you've not watched it already, I'll put a link in the description so you can uh, go back and watch that video. Good little video about me and my daughter and uh, a little memory for us, wasn't it? Yeah. So I just thought I'd nip out and take her for some dinner whilst it is the school holidays. Um, I only have two meals a day. And uh, this is my, basically, my second one, my holy drink. Now then, Bella also drinks holy, don't you? <laughs> Do you like it? I love it. Which is your favourite flavour? Strawberry and kiwi. Strawberry kiwi? Yes. Strawberry kiwi. Yeah, strawberry kiwi is pretty good. I like fruity frog. Well, I think this is actually strawberry kiwi. Good. Mmm. Oh, it's good, isn't it? Mm hmm Yeah. Anyway, so yeah. I like to spend as much time with my daughter as possible. As all parents should. So yeah, I'll uh, get back to work shortly. So Bella's got a little message for all our viewers. If you like my dad's channel, please like and subscribe. There you go, the boss has spoken. <laughs> right, so now I've just dropped my little princess off. I'm back in the yard. We'll just straighten them two little link arms, dead easy, in the press. Right, onto a flat plate. Bang, 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 keep turning them over till they're dead straight, yeah, till dead straight and level. And these ones, if you remember last time, we had a problem with them, didn't we? So again, they've twisted. So if you look at the bubble there, and look at the bubble there, so you can see how much out it is. Go back to this end here, Cal. Cal is actually on the DJ at the moment. You can see how much it's twisted there. So what's happening is, as the, as the pin's breaking, as the ramp pin, is breaking it's it's twisting these uh, dog bones all right so we're gonna try it's gone a little bit that way as well these aren't as bad as the last ones that we had by the way they're still bad but they're not as bad but it's still a fair way out of, out of the bubble that isn't it 
so I'll just try and uh, put a packer in the press try twisting that back it also out that way which isn't a lot but it is a lot when you come to put the pin in Can you see that should be dead level there at that end you can see how far out it is there so what I'm going to try and try and do I'm going to try pushing on one side so it, it kind of does a little bit of both so we're twisting it in the opposite way than what the pin broke do you know what I mean um, so we'll just give it a do but I'll need Cal to give me a lift this is where we need the director in right so we've managed to get them back now not 100 percent but I'd say 98 percent them pins are moving so that they'll be ready to go back on machine now them Cal if you were to, if you were to just slam them bang them pins in you see how it's moving freely but not really freely but but moving yeah that's good enough for what we want save us a few quid anyway I'm gonna go and bang it back on machine so Callum's just starting on this bucket now we'll start by cutting through the pin I'll be replacing it anyway because we don't know how far down that crack goes there's one at both sides put as close to the edge as you can and then blow through the side if needs be to get the end of the pin out now I have no bar in stock so I'm just going to go and pick some bar up and then I'll order a couple of them just, just to get this bucket out of the way for today I'm just on my little Indian father's here now. AJS, there he is, look, little fella. So what I've done is I've got Arvin to order me a couple of lengths of bar. Is that EN8, that Arvin, yeah? EN8. EN8. Right. And um, it's actually cheaper for me to buy a bar off Arvin than to get it from a, a supplier because he buys that much of it, basically. And, uh, but you can get me a couple of lengths of 80 mil and 65 mil, yeah, E and 8. 65, 80 and what else? 40. 45, 45. 45. See, I need some 45, 65 and 80 mil bar. So like I say, it is, uh, it's cheaper for me to get it off him than uh, any supplier, which is good. They always like coming to see me little father, you know what I'm saying? Go on, Give it a wipe before we put it in there. Uh, back at Defender. Hopefully, we're going to start getting a bit of good weather in the UK, but. <laughs> Just looked at my phone before, it looks like it's rained for the rest of the week. But next week I am actually going away. I'm going to go... I don't know where I'm going to go yet. I'm either going to go to Tenerife or I'm going to go to the Algarve in Portugal. So I'm just going to wait. I'm actually booked next week off, so I'm just going to jump on a plane and away I go. And see what I get up to whilst I'm away. So I will finish this chapter today. See where we're at. Hopefully there'll be enough for a chapter. If not, it might just be a short chapter. And I'll try and get another one filmed in this next couple of days. So you've got another one to watch the week whilst I'm off. The shutters have just been collected here now. Off they go to the new home. And once these shutters are finished with, on site, they will come back here and we'll use them within our building. Because that uh, big building that you see down there at the bottom of the yard, there is a concrete plank going in there and we will be building concrete walls on the outside of that building. And we'll use these shutters to do that.
about 75 hours in making them which ain't too bad really considering we had to move them about all the time to get trucks in and out so that's the top pin there the 80 mil pin en8 material that will go in that uh, top hanger bracket you see how they were just cut a little patch out of the floor there and then pulled it back with the chain block so there's no gap down there now that's all gouged out and prepped ready for welding and then we'll just put a little patch in there gouge this side out take all that weld out back to there and then re-weld it all quick straightforward repair but like I said I think that bucket's had a little bit more abuse than uh, I've been told all right so here we've got another wall wegs off we'll just put another well little piece in there well little piece in that section there and like I said the water could be going down the uh, the pipe and rest in there but I don't know a tricky one a tricky one oh, yeah, I did I did see people mention in the comments last week to put a flap on the exhaust well we ain't going to do that you know, we just don't have flaps on exhaust in England pretty much so anyway I think you might have enough there for a chapter all right so please like and subscribe like you always say like the author just did earlier on and uh, I'll catch you on the next one